Duxiada, Nora Dean, Nora Dean Iskulis. Hi, everybody. I am Ahmed Abdi, your English teacher. Welcome to my English lesson. In this new lesson, I'm going to teach you the pronunciation of the ED sound at the end of simple past tense regular verbs. In English, there are three different types of pronunciation when it comes at the end of simple past tense verbs. Um, if the verb ends in D or T sound, usually the ED is pronounced as it. For example, uh, it start, it started, decide, decide. If the verb ends in voice with letters, such as CH, SH, P, K, X. The ED is pronounced as T. For example, look, looked, chum, chumped. For the rest of verbs, the ED at the end is usually pronounced as the. For example, blade, not belayed. Slowed, not slowed. So, let us start our lesson now. From one English, pronunciation of ED sound. The past tense of all regular verbs end in ED. Yeah, that's true. In every verb, which is irregular, when we are talking about the past tense form of the verb, it's, it ends in ED. There are three ways to pronounce the ED of the end of the past tense regular verbs. I already mentioned. As it, example, start, started. As T, example, rage, raged. As D, example, play, played. Well, uh, if the verb ends in T or D, if the verb ends in T or D, the ED is pronounced as it. Here are some examples. This is the ending sound that you hear when I talk. This is the root verb. Here's the symbol bus form of the verb. And this is the pronunciation at the end of the verb. For example, now let us begin with T sound. T sound. We are not talking about letters here. We are talking about the sound. For example, want, now, the verb want has a T sound at the end. Therefore, we add it. Look at this. Want it. Want it. We add ED. We add ED. Now, the second word ends with a D sound. It ends with a D sound. Therefore, it should be pronounced as it at the end. For example, end, ended, ended. You are familiar with words that end with ed, but the problem is the rest. Okay, ended. The second group, uh, the, the third word, estimate, estimate, end. The verb end, end is in D, in D sound. 
So it should be pronounced as ended, ended. It should be pronounced as ended. We add it at the end. The, sec the third word is estimate. Estimate, it has a T sound at the end. So, in it is past tense form, estimate, ED is added. Estimate, ED is added. Estimated, we say estimated. First, decide, decide. Though we have an E at the end of this word, this E is artificial. It is not pronounced, but the word has a final D sound, a final D sound. So it's pronounced as decided, decided. We add ED. Contact, contact. This verb has a T sound at the end. So to pronounce it, it is contacted, contacted, contacted. We add it, it at the end. Need, need, need has a D sound at the end. Need. Need it, need it. We add it as the word has a D sound at the end. Date, the next word is date. Though it has got an E at the end, the E is artificial, it's less a sound. The word date has got a T sound at the end. Therefore, we pronounce it as it dated, dated. We add ED. We add ED. The last word is fade. 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 Faded. 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 Now, the second part is voiceless letters. These letters, voiceless letters. Or let me drive it here. Uh, the first letter is R, P, G, S, S, H, C, H, K. If, as, if the word ends, if the word ends with a first letter, such as S, P, C, H, S, H, G, H, K, the ED at the end of the verb is pronounced as T. Here are some examples. Look at this sentence. Look at this word. Here are some examples. Hope. Hope has a first letter P at the end, so it should be pronounced as T, as shown here. It should be pronounced as T, as shown here. The ED is pronounced as T. For, for example, look, hope, 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 not hope it, not hope it. It should be hoped, hoped. This ED is pronounced as T. Love. The word love has the sound F at the end, and the, way, and the letter F includes the voiceless letters. Therefore, it should be pronounced as, the ED should be pronounced as T. Listen to this. Laugh, laughed, laughed, not laugh it, not Laughed. It should be pronounced as laughed. Laughed. The third word has an S sound at the end, and the letter S includes the voiceless 
letters. Kiss, fox, kissed, kissed, foxed, foxed. The letter X has an S sound and it includes the voiceless letters. Therefore, the ED should be pronounced as T. Listen again. Kissed. Kissed, faxed, faxed, not kiss it or fax it. You should pronounce as kissed and faxed, faxed. The first one has an SH sound at the end. Wash, wash, washed, washed, washed. The ED is pronounced as T. The ED is pronounced as T. Wash, wash, not wash it, not wash it. It should be pronounced as wash, wash. The fifth one is watch. The word watch has Cha, cha sound at the end, so it should be pronounced as watched, watch, not watch it. It should be pronounced as watched, watched, not watch it. Well, like the word, the verb like has a k sound at the end, and the letter k belongs to the Voiceless letters. Therefore, it should be pronounced as T. The ED should be pronounced as T. Like. Liked. Liked. Not like it. Not like it. We pronounce the ED as T. Again, we have K sound at the end. Look at this. Look. Looked. 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 Not looked. Not looked. It should be pronounced as looked. Looked. <clears throat> Bogus. As I mentioned earlier, the letter X sounds as S. And the ED is pronounced as T when you have a voiceless letter like X. Pronounce it like bogus, boxed, boxed, not boxed. It. it should be pronounced as boxed, boxed. We add T sound at the end, not it. Stop. Stop has a P sound at the end, and the letter P belongs to firstless letters. Therefore, the ED should be pronounced as T. Stopped. Stopped, not stop it. Not stop it. Don't say stop it. Say stopped. Stopped. The last word of this group has a sha and sha sound at the end and the letter sha sh includes the voiceless letters therefore the ed should be pronounced as t look at this finish finished finished not finish it don't say finish it finish it it should be pronounced as Finished, finished. We use T sound at the end. Okay. The third group are the rest of verbs. All other sounds pronounce the ED as D. Here are some examples. Play, 
we pronounce the ed as the we pronounce the ed as the not it for example play played 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 don't say played don't say played no it is needed here hello allowed allowed we pronounce it as d allowed not allowed don't say allowed bag 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 don't say bag it say bag bag you end the sound with d listen to this learn land land not learn it don't say land say land stay stayed don't say stay it this e is silent then you pronounce it as stayed stayed not stayed say stayed is slow is slow is slowed is slowed not is slowed you pronounce it as is slowed okay is slowed is slowed open open don't say open it you say opened opened we end it with d only opened no it is needed show show showed showed not show it don't say show it you should say showed showed no it here no it here flow flowed don't say flow it say flowed 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 you add only d do not add ed seem 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 don't say seem it you should say seemed seemed you end with d not it and the last word is pull pull bull don't say bullet you should pronounce it as bold and it with d let us go to the our to the next part of our lesson which is about sentences in this lesson we will talk about sentences and their types in the first place we will talk about what a sentence is secondly we will talk about the types of sentences that you should learn in your textbook which are simple sentences and complex sentences i mean simple sentences compound sentences and complex sentences and in this lesson you will learn the first two kinds of sentences the simple sentences how it's constructed it is practice how it differs from other sentences and so on and so forth you also learn the compound sentences but in this sentence in this lesson we are not dealing with complex sentences to begin our lesson what's a sentence a sentence a sentence is a sentence is a group of words that express a complete thought 
يا كومبليت يا اكسبريس يا كومبليت سورت يو نو واي وي ساي ات اكسبريس ا كومبليت سنتنس اف ذا سنتنس دسن جيف يو ا كومبليت سنتنس باي ات سيلف اند واي اي ساي ات اكسبريس ا كومبليت ثوت از اف ا سنتنس دسن جيف يو ا كومبليت سنتنس باي ات سيلف وي نيفر كول سوتش ا سنتنس ا سنتنس بيكوز ات دسن هاف ا كومبليت سنتنس A sentence begins with a capital letter. Usually, we start sentences with a capital letter, and we end with a period or a full stop. Begins a, a capital letter and ends with a full stop, question mark, or an exclamation mark. That's what we call a sentence. A sentence can be divided into two parts. Subject and predicate. Any sentence can be divided into a subject and a predicate. A subject is usually the person or the thing that does the action, or the person or the thing you are talking about. The predicate is. Sorry. A subject is usually the person or the thing that does the action. A subject, the doer of the action, is the person or thing that you say something about, while a predicate is what you are saying about that person or thing. The predicate. Is the information that you are telling about the, this person or thing? Here are some examples. A subject, sorry. A subject is the doer of the action. It's the person or thing that you say something about. While a predicate is what you are saying about that person or thing, I think that's clear. Here are some examples. We will divide them into a bar, into a subject and a predicate. Usually, predicate starts from the verb. Examples: Amina is in the bedroom. Now, in this sentence. Amina is the doer of the action, or Amina is the person that we are talking about in this sentence. She is the subject. Is in the bedroom. The predicate. It's the predicate. Amina is in the bedroom. This is the predicate. The subject, and this is the predicate. The girl is in our class is study Arabic. The girl is in our class is study Arabic. Now in this sentence, um, you can say the girl is in our class is study Arabic. This is the subject. Is study Arabic. Is usually the predicate. In this, in our class, it's called a noun phrase, and usually it it can go with the subject. It can go with the subject because it refers to the subject. So the predicate starts from here. They are drinking coffee in the kitchen. In the kitchen, they. The word they is the subject here. Are drinking coffee in the kitchen is the predicate. Are drinking coffee in the kitchen. This is the predicate. The predicate usually tells something about the subject. This word should be here. Sorry, the laptop is expensive. We begin here. Is expensive. Is 
I guess must, that's the bridge key. The laptop is the subject of this sentence. One, okay. A simple sentence. Now let's see the types of sentences. Types of sentences. Types of sentences. As I mentioned earlier, there are three kinds of sentences. Simple sentence, compound sentence, and complex sentence. Simple sentence, let us begin with a simple sentence. Let us begin with a simple sentence. Well, in this unit, we will cover simple and compound sentences. Let us begin with simple sentence. A simple sentence, a simple sentence, sorry, a simple sentence, yes, a simple sentence contains a subject, a simple sentence contains, a simple sentence contains a subject and one predicate. Look at this. A simple sentence contains a subject and one predicate. And it expresses a complete thought. And it expresses a complete thought. It expresses a complete thought. Well, usually a simple sentence is composed of six parts. We are not dealing that here. Just I'm going to give you some examples of what a simple sentence is. Examples. The baby smiles. The baby it smiles. Here we have the subject and the predicate. It smiles. It smiles is what the baby is doing. Second, Ahmed writes in his book. Here, Ahmed is the subject. And the only predicate that we have here is Write is in his book. Ahmed is the subject here. Write is in his book. Write is in his book is the predicate here. It tells us something about Ahmed. What's Ahmed? What does Ahmed do? Ahmed writes in his book. That's the predicate. Ahmed writes in his book. The third sentence they are students. They are Student is they here is the subject. Student is are the predicate. This verb of being, what they are. Hargeza is a beautiful city. This is a simple sentence which has one predicate. Is a beautiful city. This part is telling us with. What situation Hargeza in? It tells us how beautiful Hargeza is. So it's the predicate. Islam is a peaceful religion. Is a peaceful religion is the predicate here. It tells us what the Islam is. It tells us what the Islam is. Okay, the sixth one, Khalid works. Khalid works. The verb works tell us what Khalid does every day, and it's the predicate. That is the end of simple sentence examples. Let us now start with the compound sentence. Compound sentence is usually composed of two or more simple sentences joined by coordinating conjunction such as for, an, nor, but, er, yet, and so. It has at least two predicates. 
Let us see how it works. It's simple to compose or to construct a Kanban sentence. You simply add two simple sentences plus comma and a coordinating construction. That's fan voice. Now look at these examples. Two simple sentences. Two simple sentences joined by a coordinate conjunction is called a compound sentence. We have two types of conjunctions, subordinating conjunctions and coordinating conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions are seven in number. They are seven in number. Usually, they are uh, appreciated. They are appreciated as farm boys. We will talk and explain one by one. Coordinating contractions. Coordinating contractions. Use a comma before the coordinating contraction. Coordinate contractions are appreciated as farm boys. Let us see what each letter stands for. Let us see what each letter stands for. Okay. Uh, F stands for for. And the word for is a coordinating conjunction used for reason. It's used for reason. A stands for an, and usually combines two sentences with equal priorities. F stands for for. A stands for and. N stands for nor. Nor is used for uh, negative and true statements. Usually, it never goes with true statements. It goes with negative and true statements. B is B stands for but. The word but is a coordinate construction, which means except for. For example, if you say, I ate everything but the fish, that means I ate everything except for the fish. It also has the sense of yet. Or, it stands for or. Or is a coordinating conjunction used for the choice. When you are asking someone either to do this or to do this, this it's called the choice conjunction. Why is this? For yet. Yet is another way of saying but. But usually, when you are going to say something with surprise, you use yet instead of but. But yet and but have the same meaning. They both are used for except for. And the last word, the last letter is so. S stands for so. And the coordinating, coordinating conjunction so is used for consequences. Result. For example, it was cold outside, so we came inside. As a result, we came inside. It tells us the consequences. Now, let me give you some more examples. Examples. Should we start class now, comma, or should we? wait for someone to get here. If we look at this sentence, it is two simple sentences. You have one simple sentence here. Should we start class now? This is one simple sentence. It has got one subject and one predicate. To join these two simple sentences, you use comma, and a coordinate conjunction, a suitable coordinate conjunction. And the rest of your, the second simple sentence here. Should we start class now, or should we wait for someone to get here? 
Now these two simple sentences are joined together by the use of comma and a coordinate conjunction or this choice. You are given two options. Either we should start the class now or should we wait someone else to come and start the lesson? This choice. The second sentence is, it was getting dark. It was getting dark. This is a simple sentence. You have a subject it here. You have was getting dark, which is the predicate here. We also have another simple sentence here. We weren't there yet. We weren't there yet. Now, we use comma and coordinating conjunction and to join these two simple sentences to form one compound sentence. Look at this again. It was getting dark. This is one simple sentence. We weren't there yet. This is the second simple sentence to join these two simple sentences and make them into one compound sentence, we use comma and and. The third sent two sentences. Cats are good betties. Cats are good betties. They are clean and not noisy. Well, now in these two simple sentences, you have cats are good pets. That's one simple sentence. The other simple sentence is they are clean and are not noisy. To join these two sentence, simple sentences, you need a comma and a coordinating conjunction. In this case, we take comma and for. For, as I mentioned earlier, is used instead of because. It's reason. So cats are good pets. Because they are clean and are not noisy. So the word for is interchangeable with the word because. Now we join these two small, two, now we joined these two simple sentences with the help of coordinating conjunction for. The first one, we have never been to Asia. We've never been to Asia. You have got here one simple sentence. We've never been to Asia. So. We have never been to Asia. That's a simple sentence. The second simple sentence is, have we visited Europe? Have we visited Europe? Now, to join these two simple sentences into one compound sentence, you need one coordinating conjunction and comma. In this case, we have got the coordinating conjunction nor, which is used for negative and true statements. Fifth, fifth, he didn't want to go to the dentist, yet he went anyway. In the first sentence we have, he didn't want, he didn't want to go to the dentist. This is one simple sentence. The second simple sentence is, he went anyway. Now, to join these two simple sentences, we use the word yet, which usually means surprising. I guess, uh, he didn't want to go to the dentist, yet, surprisingly, he went anyway. So now, the word yet joins these two simple sentences to form one compound sentence. Six, everyone was busy. Everyone was busy. So I went to the park alone. 
So I went to the back alone. Now we are training two sentences. The first simple sentence is, everyone was busy. The next simple sentence is, I went to the back alone. So to form a compound sentence, we use the word so and comma, which means consequence or as a result. Finally, I say, I really want to go to school, but I am not, but I am too sick. I really want to go to school, but I am too sick. Now we are training two simple sentences. The first sentence is, I really want to go to school. We join or add another simple sentence, I am too sick. To make these two simple sentences to a compound sentence, we use the coordinate conjunction, but. And that's the end of our lesson for today. I will be back in another session, inshallah. Thank you for following me and watching my video.